This is the Lotus Exige Sport 350. It has a 3.5 litre supercharged Toyota V6 producing 345 horsepower. That doesn't sound like much in the age of the 400 horsepower hot hatchback, but combined with a curb weight of just over 1100 kilos, this is a seriously, seriously quick car. 0 to 60 is a supercar bothering 3.7 seconds. Anyone that's driven one of these will tell you they are properly, properly quick. And okay, they're not the fastest thing in a straight line, but when you combine that power and lightweight with one of the finest chassis ever made, you have a serious car. Now, Lotus also make the Evora 400, which has a 400 horsepower version of the same engine, and they get that extra power through the use of a charge cooler. Now, for a long time, people were saying, why can't you just put that engine in this car? Surely that would be even better. And Lotus have turned around and said, look, we can't do that because basically the added weight that that charge cooling system would bring would pretty much negate any gains we got from the extra power. And, you know, that's not what this car is all about, really. But a year and a half or so ago, Lotus kind of relented and they gave people this, the Exige Sport 380. Now, it didn't have the charged cooled engine, but they changed a few things, put on a smaller pulley, made it look a bit wild, and they said, look, that's the closest you're probably going to get. If you want a more extreme Exige, there it is. Until recently, they did this. The Exige 430 Cup, presented here in the stunning shade of Renault Liquid Yellow, or yellow pearl as lotus call it this is possibly the ultimate evolution of the exige lotus have finally relented and put in that charge called engine but rather than using the version that they have in the evora 400 they've taken the one in the evora gt430 which is good for 430 horsepower and that's honest to goodness horsepower that's not ps it's 436 ps in case you're interested and it's 322 pound foot of torque what about the weight though? Well, the magicians at Lotus have somehow managed to make this even lighter than the old Exige 350 and 380. I say somehow, looking at it, it's actually quite clear because this car has a lot of one thing in particular, carbon. It's absolutely sensational. Let's take a closer look around. Now this car is following Lotus's current trend of trying to reduce weight and increase performance through better aerodynamics. Now that of course starts at the front where you have these much larger openings to help feed the new charge cooler setup and the car's many, many radiators. You also have this gorgeous carbon fibre splitter at the front with this little rubber lip below it and that doesn't get the battering you think it might. Up here you've got this carbon fibre access panel and one of my favourite details, you can see the fans keeping everything cool down here. That looks very F50 to me. You have the slats here, gorgeous cutouts, they are real, they are not fake a la TVR Cigaris, they actually do their job. You have these forged lightweight wheels, two-piece AP Racing discs with J-hook little formation on there, you see rather than using the drilled holes Lotus is now using this J-hook thing, which is better, better on track and resists cracking. On the side, you've now got this matte piece of protection film, which seems to be the style Lotus is going for with their 430 products. Because this is a cup car, you have the fire extinguisher and emergency uh, cutoff switches here. On the top, you've got this massive and lovely carbon fibre roof with the uh, little bits of yellow on top. At the back, one of the most fantastic pieces of carbon you will ever see on a car. This thing just is sensational, no other word for it. At the back, you then have this enormous and impossible to miss flat rear wing. Now, this is not just for show. This car produces 220 kilos of downforce. At 100 mile an hour, this is producing more downforce than the Exige 350. And at the back, just like the 380, the twin rear light setup is gone, which is a shame because I really like that. You've got this big matte black section. You've got this black carbon fiber diffuser and the little purple tinge that indicates this has a titanium exhaust system. You also have a lithium ion battery as standard and all these things add up to give you a car that has a curb weight 
no greater than the 380. That's a hell of a trick. And the uh, net result of this, 0 to 60 in just over three seconds. This is a fast car. Now it's very good of Lotus to include all of these amazing features as standard in the base price. That base price, however, is not insignificant. It is basically a hundred thousand pound. So add on a few options like this sexy paint, and you're looking at something like a hundred and five thousand pounds for an Exige. Now, I'll be honest, this looks like a hundred grand car, but I'm also looking at the Sport 350, and that car starts at £58,000. That's more than 50% more for this car, or to put it another way, an extra forty-two grand. So can this car really be good enough to justify the extra outlay? Let's find out. Now one big difference between this and the previous generation cars, the 380s in particular, as uh, just like the Evora 430s, the user controllable exhaust button has gone. You can no longer override the exhaust valve. Uh, it's an EU thing. Now, it's similar to what it was before in that you've got a valve that will open at about 4,500 RPM or under certain throttle loadings. So let's, uh, let's get in a straight line and see what she'll do. certainly moves it doesn't feel I don't know it doesn't feel night and day different to the other sounds night and day different to the other car I think that mid-range is definitely stronger I need to turn this around and get some open road really so I can have it planted for a little bit longer gearbox is just as delightful as ever dash is different to the older car that makes a different beep when you indicate for a car with a manual gearbox and McLaren type 0-60 numbers, very easy to drive, very, very easy. Oh. Okay, so, <laughs> it does the McLaren thing. It does the Nissan GTR thing. It doesn't really kind of, you know, throw you back in the seat. It's not that kind of car. But you put your foot down. You don't think you're gathering that much speed. Your bum, your body doesn't tell you you're gathering that much speed. And you look down there. Shit. It's a sensation as well. That's the biggest difference right now. That's the, the whole experience. It feels like the cup cars did. Now one thing actually which I've just thought about, which I hadn't thought about, I'm about to go on bumpier roads, but is not striking me as different and in a good way, suspension. This has got the three-way adjustable Nitron dampers. It's still not, I think there's something about Lotus, something about the way the company is and the fantastic engineers they have. Gavin, if you're watching this, you the man. They don't seem to have it in them to make an uncomfortable car. They don't seem to have it in them to make an uncompromising car, a car that you wouldn't want to drive on the road. A lot of the time in the past, things like the 911, the GT3 RS, you know, and the Ferrari Challenge Stradale, they've been cars that are just not comfy on the road. You put the sound insulation and stuff back in this, no harder to drive than an Elise. Unless you want it to be, of course. That's That says a lot. So I'm now going to take it down my favourite road around here, which is going to be a real test of whether it's still got that essence of lotusness, that ability to cross broken ground at somewhat unreasonable pace. It's slippy out there today. I came down here in the Evora 500 earlier. You can still see patches of snow about and uh, it's greasy. It's very, very greasy. Whoa! Jesus! The 
last time I came down here in something that felt a bit like this, it was the 311. This thing's carrying some pace. Whoa, Christ almighty. I'm not using more than half throttle because I don't need to. Oh, this is lumping and bouncing me around somewhat. What are you doing and how much road do you want? Jesus, why are you driving down this road? I'm trying to take my camera off. Bits of mud like that are a real hazard. Oh, I don't know how much my camera's being bounced around, but I suspect it's a lot. This is a, a visceral experience. On a day like today, I cannot deploy everything this car has down here. Oh! Breaking traction there a little bit at the back. So the characteristic that it's gained that the Avora 400 has is that at 5,000 RPM, it really starts to pull those headline figures, you know, the, the extra bit, the extra sort of 20 something pound foot of torque and the extra 30 horsepower, ignore those. They're not the figures to look at. It's the way it moves under the curve. It's just constantly, constantly going for it. It's glorious. So familiar, yet still so good. Wow, she moves, she follows the camera of the road. She really does. It's sensory overload in the best possible way. This is not scary, this is intense. This is not scary. I wouldn't let an inexperienced driver try this. No way. Lotus claim this thing weighs some 1,100 kilo. I believe them. The steering is, is hyper alert, absolutely manic. It's not like the regular XE is just dozy at all, but this is nuts. Followed this thing briefly earlier. Uh, it looks sensational from the back. On track, when the downforce starts working, this thing's going to be absolutely phenomenal. What a machine. But there's something I have to, I have to consider. We've got to talk about price. You can pick up an XE Sport 350 from around £58,000, brand new. This one. Near as makes no difference, a hundred thousand pounds. That's a lot of money, a huge amount of money. Now I'm not going to compare it to something like a 911 GT3 because it's a completely different type of car and it's a completely different experience. Hundred grand. You can buy a lot of nice cars. You're not going to get much like this. Really, its own competition is other Exiges. There's going to be people looking at it going, hey, I can buy an Exige 350, stick a Como Tech kit on it, save some money, yada yada. Look, there's two ways to see this car, okay? Number one, you see it as an Exige 350, 380, whatever you want to do, with some bells on and a bit of an engine upgrade. And if you see it like that, it's going to seem like incredibly poor value. The other way to see it is as what could be the ultimate expression of this car. Lotus have gone on record saying they're not sure they can get any more out of this gearbox. Certainly not with them being happy to stick a warranty on it. So we may never see a faster Exige of this type. I'm sure they'll do a special edition or something, but ultimately this could be very much end of line. This could be as far as they go. And there's absolutely no denying this feels and looks like a very, very special car. The car park at Bell and Colville is an absolute delight. It is a millionaire's toy chest. It's just stunning to look at. 
It's not like going to somewhere like an Aston dealership or something where it's 50 shades of grey. Oh no, this place is a riot of colour. And yet, this car stands out. Amongst all that beautiful machinery, this car stands out. Maybe it's the massive wing, maybe it's the gorgeous Renault liquid yellow paint job. Who can say? But it looks special. Properly special. And when I see the prices people are willing to pay for 15 year old Ferraris and things like that, and of course, more modern 911 GT3s. If you want something that delivers you a raw, unadulterated driving experience, this is a bargain. It's a hell of a car. The best news of all, if you simply can't afford it, I went out about an hour ago in the Sport 350, and that is still properly good. So basically, Exige, brilliant in all shapes and forms. You don't have to buy the most expensive one to get a decent driving experience. But if you want something that's truly special, even in the rarefied world of Lotus, this will do it. Doesn't feel as fast as I thought it would. By God. This is crack for petrol heads. Thanks for watching, everybody. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Do all those things that you do. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.